look at that. It's ridiculous. I come on and the computer goes bananas. It's so weird, y'all. It's so weird. All right. I am the worst at production of my own shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's in California. I know. And it's like dark. At, look at this shit. I'm having the worst day technically. I've been having a bad week technically. Okay. I, I just, I'm trying y'all. Okay. I'm not going to touch any. Oh, look, that ring there. <laughs> I've got to get rid of that light. Oh. Okay. There. Mystery solved. Thank God I put some pants on. I had boxer shorts on before. <laughs> if I got up and I was still wearing underwear, that's what I do. Okay. Hi, you guys. Oh, my God. I didn't, sh I didn't make this, like, stop. I have to go into the settings and figure out how to make that run slower, and I never do it. I forget every time. For five years, I've forgotten because it's so, like, whatever. How is everybody? I'm having coffee, my car coffee. I made it in the house. Oh, my God, y'all. You want to know what you get for your car, and it's, like, 30 bucks? Okay. See this thing? Do you see this? It plugs into your cigarette lighter thing and you can put your little car kettle and plug it in. Yeah, you know. You know that's right, right? <laughs> ah, I'm having fun. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm choking here. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's what you can do. I feel like I don't know what to say. It's actually dark in California. What time is it? 4.09. It is dark outside. What is going on? Like, why is this a thing? I don't understand. Car kettle. I have a car kettle and I have my car uh, espresso maker, but you can put the water in the car kettle so you can have tea because I'm Canadian. We do that shit and coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Okay. So obsessed isn't the word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with coffee. <laughs> no, it's dark outside, y'all. It's dark. It is dark. Yeah. It's weird. Hi, you guys. How is everybody? Sending positive vibes from... I'm from Southern California. I mean, I'm in Southern California, but you can't find me because I'm hiding. <laughs> um. Okay. I know the chat is so fast. As I said, for five years, I've been saying that I would fix it, but apparently I forget. I'm one person. Y'all, y'all are blown up. Listen, y'all, you all are blowing up my phones. I can't respond to anybody, everybody. So when I open my calendar, I do. Otherwise, I don't book readings. I can only do so much. Jennifer, thank you for that so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wait, my brother passed. Wait, what? Your brother passed yesterday? Jennifer, thank you for that so much. Um, yeah, I've got to change, and now and now my internet, I mean, uh, I can't send my mail because my, oh, God, make it stop electrically. They fuck with everything. Anyway, um, Jennifer, thank you. You're always so generous. Th yeah, my hair, look it. It's shaved, y'all. Look, shaved, shaved. You know why? I don't care. When it grows long, it feels yucky to me now. Okay, Albuquerque, please do a reading on Sandra. I don't know who that is. Okay, so when you guys, when I went viral, I've never said that before, when I went viral or whatever, when it went all over, um, I know on YouTube everywhere, people are phoning me and they want a reading and they're emailing. I understand that, but I can't do them all. So I just book my calendar. I do not book it for a whole year. If you try to book a reading and you can't, it's because I've shut it down because I'm only going to work so much. And it's, yeah, for me, I need my free time. You know that. Um, you understand that, right? You get that. I need my free time. I'm not like a working robot. So I do this. I do the videos. I do the readings. I do the text questions. And if you ordered an astrology chart, a full astrology chart reading, that takes six to eight weeks. It says that on it. So I've got like 15 to do in order. So next week, I'm not taking readings. I'm doing your all charts or the charts that are in order to be done. Whatever. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. 
That's how I work because I'm my boss and I don't have a team. I'm just me. So, and I need my free time and that's what I need. So do you do reading? I don't know who that is. Amanda Rab. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I've got a bunch to do. I just did Matthew Perry tonight. I don't know how well it showed up or tune or, or I don't know how well it went. Anyway, I did it and I'm going to put it up in a second. <coughs> I'm going to put it up in a second. Yeah, it's, um, y'all, what the fuck is wrong with P. Diddy? What is wrong with that man? We know once you let him in your body, they take over. This, this, yeah, this has been a thing. This has been a thing always. It's been a thing. I've seen it since I was young. I've seen demons and people, entities that are non-human attached to people. Paul Walker's an interesting one because he too was another man that dated a very fucking young girl. What is with that? Jennifer, thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer, who supported me since day one. Thank you so very much. That girl supports me like nobody's business and is super generous and I truly appreciate it. Yeah, Paul Walker had very, it, it's, I, it's, you know, it's um like, what are men doing when they do that shit, right? What are they doing? Yeah, what are they doing? Stevie Nicks, can't stand the woman. I know, don't know her. She's still alive though. Pray for everybody. Exactly, yeah. Sandra Bullock, right? They're all suspicious. You cannot sell out. Some, some people's aren't suspicious. Some people's aren't, um, suspicious but the public is so brainwashed they're so brain like the general public is so brainwashed uh i saw the little pink spirit fingers <laughs> spirit fingers from that movie bring it on i love that movie i gotta say simon cowell what's up with him he's such a fucking bitch you see okay sorry i don't know what his level of talent is i've got to stop swearing oh my god to the fucking asshole yeah i'm saying that who emails me and says I shouldn't swear because it's not classy and it's the this and that. Shut the fuck up. I'll talk the way I talk. And if you know me in my real life, this is the way I talk. So don't tell me. I don't care if you think I'm classy or ghetto. I don't care. Okay? I'm a hood rat. A white hood rat. But still, nonetheless, a fucking hood rat. Okay? I don't care. I don't care. San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles. Trust me. Okay, I saw more shit in my neighborhood and got just more shit. I'm going to swear if I want to swear. If you don't want to swear, then turn off my channel and go fuck yourself somewhere else. Go listen to someone else. Go listen to someone else. What I find, you know, I'll tell you something. In my life with the men who've abused me in my life, which is most of them, but anyway, the ones that were friends, the ones that were boyfriends when I was younger, they always come at you very politely. They always come at you very polite. No, we were the only white family in our neighborhood. We, my kids thought they were black. My kids thought that. My kids literally thought that. We were the one white family in the neighborhood. Everybody was of some other, or a few white families, but most people were of a different ethnic background than us. Um, so, yeah, so it was more like that. So that's right. Like, there aren't very many blonde people in Los Angeles. I mean, unless they're bleaching. Well, I'm not really blonde. Well, I am blonde, but not this blonde. Anyway, not the point. Uh, the point is the people I've met who are abusive in business and work, they're always polite. They're always so polite. If your husband's overly polite, I think he's a narcissist, okay? If he's so polite, he's so polite, he's a hider. He's not himself. Be yourself. The only time you probably shouldn't swear is if you go into court because the judge gets pissed off at that. <laughs> Other than that, it's all right. So don't email me and tell me you don't like my personality or I swear too much or have some class. I'm not trying to have class, you status-seeking troll. That's not what I'm trying to do. It's probably a family member. Yeah, I know. Fuck off. How about that? Just fuck off. Like, I don't care. So stop. No, they are. Someone, wait, someone called you what? I don't say that shit to people. I'm not going to call you a name, but I'll call you a fucking troll. I mean, you know. Mm. It is what it is. I'm trying to look for the chat here on the, um, on the YouTube studio where you slow down the chat. It's like so hard. Search your channel. Chat <laughs> controls. I'm so weird here. I, you know, someone's going to have to tell me how I changed chat button. I can't do it. 
right now. Um, no, people email me. They email me stuff. Also, I do the best I can, like within three days to answer the email questions because I got blown up. And again, I'm one person. It's just me. It's me sitting here in my son's underwear. Yeah, I said that right too. That's what I said. When Keithy died, his clothes, John brought them over here. My friend, is it raining? It's raining outside. What is going on? Tyler Perry's a sold out liar. Okay. Straight up fucking liar. So is Oprah. They're all, they're just fucking liars. So is Spielberg. They're all liars. And, and stop emailing me with racist shit and saying it's racist. Why don't I go after white people who are pedophiles? I think I do. I think I do. Okay. So I just think I do. Period. Okay. So people email me the dumbest shit. If you don't like it, Here's the thing. I work for myself. I don't care what you say. Okay, so there's um, so there's that. But anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Keithy's clothes. John brought me a big bag. My friend Stacy bought me this thing where you, when, you're per when your person dies, you can take their T-shirts and make a blanket. So we did that for Jason. But all of Keithy's, like, underwear and pants, Jason took what fit him. But I use his underwear and his t-shirts as my pajamas for the rest of my life. So sometimes I go outside in my neighborhood <laughs> wearing his boxer shorts. Styles from the 80s where I used to wear bike shorts with boxer shorts over them. But that's what I do. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. So I wear his little under trunks at night because he's my little boy. And I will wear his clothes and his t-shirts and I'll wear whatever I want because I can do that. So there, what's wrong with people? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And they bother to email you. And stop saying, you fucking trolls, stop saying I'm for genocide. Stop saying that, okay? I can have a political opinion. You can have a political opinion. It's called free speech and the government causes every problem. They lie on both sides. And I am not into genocide on any level. But here's what I will say about that. Since y'all want to email me that, here's something. You still wear your son's t-shirt. Yeah. Here's something we should be thinking about. So I don't mean to burst anyone's bubble. Thanksgiving, all of that. Everybody gives thanks and they're all nice. And Christmas, the birth of Jesus and all of this and blah, blah, blah. The government made up those dates. We have no... And for personally, I really feel like Jesus is a Virgo. Don't yell at me. That's what I think, because he would, he could slice with his words, right? But we don't know the time, and they didn't do charts like that at the time, so blah, blah, blah. They took quadrants, like they split the year into four, the, the seasons. So I think September, October, November, December, I think he was a September birthday, but I cannot prove it. But that's what I think, all right? Some people say Pisces because he was on the cross. I say Virgo because he was radical and a healer. That's what I say. However, however... When you're looking at Thanksgiving, do you ever notice how the government puts a holiday on the calendar for every month? Like the little monkeys in the cage are supposed to go out and buy the gifts and cook the food and have people. And then we're supposed to go, we give thanks? No. What about the native people that they screwed over out of their land? No one ever talks about that. No one ever says, how come Native Americans, Aboriginals, whatever we're calling them, Canada's changed the, the diction on that so many times, and I'm Canadian. What about that? What about the assimilation of the Native, Native Canadian Indian people? Okay, bad, wrong word. But why are we celebrating on a day when they took over all of their property and land, murdered them, and tried to assimilate them into white culture with the Queen, with the Catholic Church, and took them out of their homes. Why do we celebrate that? Why is that a good thing? No way the Indian at the time, wrong word, native people, indigenous, indigenous to the land, agreed for Whitey to take their shit over. But I don't hear any shit about that. I just hear, oh, give thanks. Shut up with that. I'm, I'm not, give, I give thanks every day, every single day. I don't need the government and a calendar telling me that I need to buy a turkey and then make some big brouhaha out of it like it matters. It doesn't matter. There's children every single day going hungry in this country. Why don't we feed them every single day? Oh, no, we can't do that. No, we got to give our welfare to people who drive SUVs and get their nails done and shop at Costco, by the way, and, and go to the liquor store that they left over during COVID. So, I mean, just saying. 
So I say, fuck Thanksgiving, fuck Christmas. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. I pray to God every day. I talk to Jesus every day. And I give thanks every day for what I feel like I should give thanks for. I try to find something. But you see what they're doing. They're going, on Thanksgiving, let's open the soup kitchen. And let's make the people who live on the street and have nothing and are traumatized, let's have them be thankful for something so we can gaslight them. They have nothing to be thankful for. Hello? They're in a soup kitchen. I mean, let's be serious. What is wrong with people? But still, I hope you had a good Thanksgiving <laughs> with your families. So I look at it as my family, but I don't just show up at Thanksgiving or Christmas. I go as much as I can all the time to see my babies and to see my grandkids and to see my little daughter-in-law and even to see John. That's what I'm thankful for. I don't care about anything else. So I'm going to do that every day. But I, they, they took the land. I mean, Middle East aside, what's been going on since before Jesus, I'm just going to say this. In 1947 or 8, when they gave the land to Israel, I mean, who gave that land? Why don't you go yell at those people if you don't agree with that? Don't yell at me because the land was given to them. Just like the land was taken from Mexico. You know, California is Mexico, right? You do know that. All you Californians yelling at me in here. You do know that. That the Mexican people could come back and take California, which they're doing one by one, clearly. They're doing that, but it's not our land. And by the way, who gave it to them? And just the government because of a war, because of this, because of that. I don't have time to go through all of that. So there you go. Anyway, people get really mad when I say that. They expect me to pick a side. I know the government's orchestrating it. All war and all conditions and all, why do you think, and I'm going to say this, why do you think we have whatever group of people, what about Japanese internment camps? We don't hear much about that. I grew up with a bunch of kids that's parents were in Japanese internment camps and were doctors and fucked with their minds, okay? So why don't we talk about that? We only talk about certain things. Why? Because the government controls it. Know that. Look at your calendar and look at the bullshit dates on your calendar where they want everybody in unison doing one thing. But why? Why do they want us all doing that? Because they harness energy at that time. So don't do that. Don't do it. I don't, I'm sorry. I radically disagree with the government. <laughs> ah, right? Yeah. Hi from New Jersey. I mean, it is to harness energy. you got all the Catholics across the world praying in their churches at midnight mass with a bunch of weirdos in fucking robes. And yes, I'm calling the Catholic church priests weirdos. Okay. Weirdos. Why do you give your kids over to men who wear robes? Why is that religion? How do you even know if that's what God wants? How do you know that? Why? Because your parents told you that? How do they know that? Oh, man made the church. Man gets a tax break and man collects money and tells you, you can't, look, look, look. Mm. So as you know, I'm just, I'm just going to say that I'm on a rant now. As you know, my husband was much older than me, right? Is much older than me. He's not dead. Anyway, Luckily for him. But nonetheless, he was raised Catholic. And so when he was in his 20s and in church, right? And in church with his wife at the time. He had two kids by the time he was 20. And then we had our kids when he was 47 and 50. So when he was in church with the first wife, the priest would say, you can't be on birth control. And he would say, but they're on birth control because we're fucking them. So ask yourself a question. Why would a whole religion go after women like they're the fucking pariah? And I mean, the, we wouldn't have to be on birth control if the men wore condoms, but they don't do that. Ladies, don't we know that? How many of you know men that wear condoms? Maybe uh, um, male prostitutes and stuff, maybe, but no like man in a marriage is going to wear a condom for God's sakes. I mean, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, I mean, no. So, I mean, come on. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. But none of you can use the rhythm method. That's called being a parent. But ask yourself that. What kind of religion pushes a whole bunch of people? And to the woman or man, I can't remember which one it was, who was gay and asked if they were going to heaven. Who taught you that? Why would you not go to heaven? Or did you murder somebody by being gay? Or did you fall in love and have a partner of the same sex? I'm I'm misunderstanding here. I'm I'm under I'm not understanding why what you do with your body with another adult 
in a love relationship would keep you out of heaven because the church told you that, because the church told you that, because the church said that, full of men born on earth who say they're men of God or they're preaching the gospel of whatever the Mormons preach or the Jehovah Witness or the Scientologists. Like they know, nobody knows. It's bullshit. And the best guy I've heard online, and I'm going to tell you, yeah, I know it's so weird, right? Everybody, that's what I'm saying. If you're in, if you harm a child, I don't know where you go because that is against everything. But if you're an adult and you're fucking someone of the same sex or whatever they want to call it, I'm sorry. Like, really? God's like, yep, you know, you're gay. I'm shutting the door. I don't think so. I just like, what? are you even talking about? <laughs> what are you even talking about? What? No, that's all religious bullshit, right? No, 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 no. It's all crazy. It's all crazy, right? Sammy Davis. Yes, he, he said he was a Satanist. So, oh my God. See, there's the, the cat's not here and that just did that. Shit moves in here. Anyway, the, um, Sammy Davis Jr. and Tina Louise. And in fact, I ran into somebody hiking in Burbank that was a friend of Tina Louise way back. I don't know if it was in the 80s or 70s or something. And she was proud of being a Satanist. Doris Day, Satanist. Bet you didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. They use black magic to get what they want. Understand, it's their undoing though in life. It's their undoing, right? No, that was like flying down here by my purse. I don't even know what it is. Um, oh, I'm sorry you're sick. Yes, take off. I've got to do his. I didn't even really know who he was. I mean, I've heard the name. I don't listen to rap or hip hop. Well, salt and pepper. Okay, that's where I draw the line because I'm all into the heavy metal. You know that about me. Mm. Anyway, when we look at our society, why are we allowing people like I swear to God, you say I'm a genocidist. I get this. I get these emails. I get these texts all the time. Why the fuck you people say that? Why don't you go after the people that split the land up? They're known as government officials. And why don't you stop them? And why doesn't anybody support native anything? Native aboriginals or whatever they're called. I, I can't keep up with it. Native Canadians and Native Americans. You realize the Catholic Church and the Queen took all of the native children in Canada and, and took them out of their homes. Like you got your kids. They came along and they said, no, we don't like how you are. So we're going to take your kids and we're going to teach them how to be something that they're not. What exactly is that? And why do people support the royal family? We got Prince Andrew, the pedophile. Why are we supporting them? We, we got like, who fucking cares? They're wasting their taxpayers money. Do you understand those people have wealth from the, from the people who pay taxes? Do you understand that? So why are you applauding it? It's like, great, they're thieves. They're thieves, okay? They don't deserve it. There's people starving in that country. There's wars. It's terrible. They're thieves, okay? Thieves. I know. No one wants to hear me. But here's my point. I will continue to be outrageously outspoken because we have free speech. And if people don't recognize, now I don't like, okay, I don't not like, but Susan Sarandon and the little girl that played Wednesday, uh, Jenna Coleman, I think it's her. They both got fired from their agency. Okay, if it's a private agency, not a government official agency, they can be fired. I don't think you can be fired if you're a woman. Susan Sarandon might have a point because she's in her 70s. So she's 77. She's the same age as John, right? So they may have used that as an excuse to fire her, but she still has a right to say what she wants to say, whether I fucking agree with her or not. And I don't agree with half of Hollywood and I live in Hollywood and I don't agree with them. They say stupid shit, leftist shit. And what I mean by that is dumb shit. However, I support their right to say whatever they want to say. I don't have to give them money, but we have free speech. Why are we being censored? Why are we being fucking tortured? What is going on? What is happening? What is happening? I mean, I don't like half of what... I, 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 again, Julia Roberts, stupid, okay? Everybody, Dr. Fauci, I'm so honored to be talking to you. Listen, you mental patient, he's ridiculous. She still has the right to say it though, and I have the right to say what I want about her doing that to support him. We both have a right. If she has a right, I have a right. 
If you have a right, he has a right. So what's with the censoring? And don't think if they don't censor, if it, just because you disagree with somebody, like censoring Trump. Y'all hate Trump. Orange man bad, orange man bad. I get it, orange man bad. He's a blowhard and a weirdo and a whatever, okay? However, he has a right, just like every other, just like every other person has a right. And yet they're trying to shut him down. They, do you realize they kicked the president off of Twitter? What kind of censorship garbage is that? What is that? I mean, I don't, I, I, as you know, before you email me, I do not vote. I will never vote. Got it? I don't do government. I don't believe in it. They are not my authority. Okay, God is my authority, period, end of conversation. However, I don't like the president now and I didn't like the president then. Both of them are stupid, okay? They have the right to blather on the way they do because it's free speech, free speech. Now, they may have more of a responsibility because they're in a position of power. That may be true, but it is free speech, free speech, y'all. Stand up for free speech. Even if you don't like what the person says, stand up for your right because they're going to come take your rights. It's in court right now. It was in Congress this morning that they that the Americans were being censored. What is this, Russia or China? They make fun of those places and look at us. Okay, that's the tangent. Tangent over with. Shh, tangent done, y'all. <laughs> tangent done. Okay, I had to say it. <laughs> I had to say it. Tangent done. Um, yeah, I'm going to say what I want. You you can fucking whatever. I'm going to say whatever. Yeah, I won't vote. I don't because I don't. Um, it's not that tax money towards streets and towards the betterment of cities is not. a. It, that's an important thing. So I do think we have have some sort of government. But these people being public servants and making millions and billions of dollars. Like, what are you really doing? Because we're paying so much taxes. And okay, now I feel another rant coming on from California. It's another rant, y'all. Thank you for that. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, y'all, the super chats. I'm looking up there. Thank you all for that. I'm just seeing them pop up now. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, I'm just thinking of this right now. The plastic bag ban. First of all, I was at a dinner party. This is like before Keithy died. So it's going to be like five years ago. Because it'll be the third birthday coming up in December. Anyway, I mark everything by my children. My children's birth and the death of my son. And that's just the way it is. And you're going to have to listen to that too. But anyway, I was at a dinner party with like 30 people and a group of friends of mine. And the one of the girls at the party, and I'm sitting at the table. And she's like, yeah, me and so-and-so, another mutual friend. We went to rallies with Gavin Newsom. And he's so handsome and we support him. Personally... I wanted to throw up on the table, okay? <laughs> I was like, I, I can't respect you because you just said that. But they have a right to say something. I did not argue with them at the dinner party. I didn't say a word. I just let it go, let it go, let it go, right? Because they have their opinion. These same people, yeah, yoga pants. Yoga pants and the police at his house all the time because of his little gay boyfriend. But yoga pants is married. Where is Garcetti? Did they lock him up somewhere? Where is that guy? Um, yeah, yoga, <laughs> Garcetti. Garcetti and his gay lover in the guest house. You didn't hear it here. Um, Californians know. Californians be knowing what they know. But here's what they did. They literally told us on the ballot. Now, I don't vote. And people will go, well, if you don't vote, you can't speak. I believe it's all fixed and it's a selection like sports. Orange man bad, Biden good. Biden bad, orange man good. Okay, so they only really give you two choices, Democrat and Republican. I'm not happy with that. None of that works for me. Bits of this and bits of that. And I'll mix and match as my intellect evolves throughout my lifetime, period. But anyway, they told us with the plastic bag ban, we used to get free plastic bags at the grocery store, right? They were thin, very thin, but we could use them like to pick up dog poop or put your kid's shoes in or put a wet swimsuit in when the kids were in school and all of that stuff. No, they wanted to stop it to save all the little animals in the wetlands because the plastic doesn't break down and the poor animals, they eat it. Shut the fuck up with that. So what they did is they got all of the people in California to vote for this new legislation to ban plastic bags. And then the corporations, like a bunch of bitches, brought in thicker plastic bags, thicker, 
three times thicker and charge us 10 cents and give none of it to the wetlands, maybe 10%. And so the CEO's wife, she drives 600 cars or whatever. The kids go to private school, then they mock you when you don't have enough food and then they up the price of blueberries. That's what happens. Stop voting for these people in this because you feel good. If, I mean, because you think you're doing something for the wetlands. If you want to do that, you carry a brown paper bag around and grow, bag your groceries that way. Do not vote on legislation. Do not do it. Do, just don't do it. Every time I get a bag, I steal the bags. That's me. I don't put in there. It's how many bags do you want? I don't want any and I'm taking three. You know why I'm taking three? Fuck you for doing that. <laughs> That's why I'm taking three. Oh my God, I'm going to get arrested. Anyway, I know, right? The straw, the one straw up the little turtle's nose. I mean, what is that? Okay, sorry, this is a complete rant. I must be not PMSing or men menopausing. Okay, so anyway, that's what I was going to say. Oh my God, right? I know, okay. <laughs> I know, and then they have, don't get me started again. And then we got to stand in the checkout line and check my own groceries out like I'm a bagging bitch. Ralph's isn't paying me to do that. Ralph's does not pay me. Oh, this is how you scan the code. Listen, I'm sorry that they took your job from you and gave you some stupid job and took your pension away, but I don't need to know about the scan. Do you know why? Because Ralph's is not paying me to do that. They're not paying me. Oh my God. You see what they do? Yeah, right, right. I'm going to check. That's right, but then... They removed all of the checkers in Los Angeles, but two. They've got 13 aisles of checkers. They don't hire them. They want to automate it so you work for them while paying triple for your groceries. That's what they want to do. You pay. Oh, yeah, poor Summer Wells, right? After 37, no, I know, it's disgusting. Yeah, I know. If you worked at Ralph's, I, I used to, I was blown away by the people in my neighborhood. They're like, no. You know, it's a good thing. I'm like, you realize you're losing your job. Like, I can't handle, I I can't, I, I yeah, I can't. Um, yeah, I just can't. I just can't. Um, <laughs> I just can't. You know why Diddy hasn't been arrested? Because they all partake in what he's doing. You are not getting in. Do you realize 30 years later, that motherfucker is releasing people's creative work? Talk about what I talk about when it talk, comes to binding energy. All of those artists going all the way to Mary. I, I remember hearing Mary J. Blythe talk about how she put her hard-earned money, effort, work, and the essence of her creative self into what she did. And Diddy held it. And she said, I was broke, living, sharing a room, sharing an apartment. I don't know if she was with her mother or somebody else. I can't remember that part. And she said, my music was all over the radio and I didn't get a fucking penny. Why? Why do we have, why do we have managers who are over creative artists, right? Why do we have that? You don't need a manager. It's the same with prostitutes. You don't need a fucking pimp. They say you need it for protection. Pimps hate women, okay? Pimps hate women. They hate you, okay? You, they are fucking stealing your body energy. If you're going to spread your legs for money, ladies, I don't care if you're on the street, carry a gun and do it for yourself. Do not give your money to a man, do, unless it's your child or your father or your relative. Do not do that. That's how the music industry is run. That's how acting's run. That's how stripping was run when I was a stripper. There were managers and all the girls had managers. I was way too not committal, non-committal. I couldn't do that. So I just bounced around and went wherever. It's terrible. They do that. Don't give your money to them. You're a fucking manager. If you're telling me if I'm out on the streets and I'm, you know, stripping or prostituting and I got a hoochie and boobies and I'm halfway, like these men don't care what you look like. They just want to dump their garbage onto you, right? Oh my God. I just can't. Educate your daughters and educate your sons too. And you need this and you need that. And you need this. I don't need to be chained to you. Mm -mm. Let's see. Are you a Pisces? No, <laughs> I'm not a Pisces. Um, but I have a loaded 12th house. Uh, I'm a Leo, sun, moon, and rising. With Virgo in the first house. So I will cut you with my words. Not you personally. Somebody in my real life. But anyway, um, yeah, the, the, 
the industry, what Diddy was doing is he's he's out there pimping and pandering like a bitch. He's taking uh, and uh, first of all, I listened to some guy. I don't know who the guy is. I don't know who he is. He popped up on TikTok and he's talking about how Diddy how how he was in Diddy's entourage. And I don't know who the guy, I really don't know who he is. So I can't say. It's nobody I'm familiar with. It's not 50 Cent. It's not anybody. And 50 Cent stood up, stood up for Cassie. What the hell is wrong with all of these fucking men? Is that the cat? Oh, look, she bounced up, y'all. She's talking to Keithy over there. <laughs> She's looking at me. She's over there. Anyway, um, what is wrong with them that they think that it's okay. Like, how come it's men in groups of men, like the Jodie Foster movie, right? Where they gang rape people and they videotape it and they think that that's okay. Like, who were you raised by? Do you not have a mother and daughter? Do you not think that's going to happen to your mother, your daughter, your granddaughter? Do you not think that? Because you're marking them for your sins. You get that. And I'm talking that's a huge immoral act that that's going on. Like, I don't care if the girl wants to fuck all the guys. Why are you telling people and why are you filming it? What On what planet do you think it's okay? It's for blackmail. That's what planet they're doing. It's for blackmail so that they can use it against her to entrap her. That's why I say, okay, he did he his daughters. He should know better because it's going to happen to them. The sins of the father always pass on down. It's disgusting. It's like, dude. What, you think you're special and someone ain't going to do that to your kid? You marked her. That's an ancestral curse, meaning your behavior carries on seven generations down. That's why you want to atone for it. That's why you want to atone it. You want to atone for it. You think you're selling drugs and you're cool when you're young? Who do you think is going to sell drugs to one of your kids and have them OD? That's right, somebody. That's what happened, not to everybody, but they'd either get you. It either gets you in your childhood, your, your adulthood, or with your grandkids. You are not getting off of that. And that's here, the reverberation of balance. That's when we say karma, I'm going to use the word balance, but that's the reverberation. Yeah, you have to ask for forgiveness every single fucking day. Um, oh, it is passed on down. It's totally passed on down. That's why... It, <sighs> That's why you can see in families, you can see the history, you can feel the blocks until somebody stands up and breaks it. And that's what happens. And they do it. And it's it's absurd. And by the way, I'll tell you another thing, because this happened, this happened in our family, I believe, allegedly. Anyway, when there's a family member who marries into another family, a marriage, right? And one of them works in Hollywood. And then suddenly, like, your stepson dies. And then your son dies. Then they have karma around that. And I believe that. If they're doing their shit over here and you're connected, they don't care who they take out. They don't care. And so you can die around them. That's why you can't even be friends with them because it will carry, it marks you. Energetically, I'm speaking of. Um, the way to break it is to speak. The way to break it is to speak to speak, okay, to speak the trauma. That's why I don't shut up about it. Um, you need to speak it, right? Um, only which in the, in the, you're the only, no, it's a lineage history thing. And by which, they call witches, everybody, they call psychics witches and they call, um, you know, mediums witches. And here's another thing, the gay mafia. Oh, totally. Yeah, one of, one of our family members married into that and, you know, one son died and then, 24 years later, the other son died. That happened and we're sitting here and, you know, uh, whatever. I just don't trust it. I don't trust it. You're making your money in Hollywood and you're making millions of dollars and you're buying property and warehouses and shit. You a motherfucker. And they know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say their name, but we've talked about him before. <clears throat> yes, JFK. Exactly. And no, JFK is not alive. <laughs> Jeff, well, JFK Jr., there's one of them that's alive. But um, when you're looking, let's see, love, many, thank you. Yes, exactly. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They fucking cast their spells. Thank you all for the super chats up there. They cast their spells on us and they do that. I mean, 
mediumship and psychic ability is like, okay, let's look at it this way. Because somebody asked me this question too. Can you teach it? You can foster somebody's ability like a good coach for an athlete or, um, you know, like uh, somebody who's training somebody like a chef and a junior chef. You have to have the ability to understand. I could go to singing school all I want and trust me, there's no music coming out of my mouth. Meaning I, I just don't sing. I can sing, but I don't sing where it's ever going to be called a singer. I'm never going to be called a singer. So when you're looking at mediumship, this is a lineage history throughout the family. So the veil is moving in a different way. And your me there's not one way to do mediumship. So when you have all these teachers and all of these mediums that say they learned from their mentor, that's bullshit. You cannot learn psychic anything from anybody. They can help you foster it. And it's not a science. It's an energy and it resonates with the way that your body resonates. So I'm very loud and very verbal. So my psychic ability comes out like that. But I also feel people's things. So when my kids were little and people would get drunk, they would say to me, we drink, you get drunk because I'm empathic that way with a loaded 12th house. So when you see these mediums and I don't like them on here, and I've told you about it. I've been asked to prove myself to them. And I'm not proving myself to anybody. I don't care. You can think I'm fucking crazy or not. I, I really don't care. Get in line. When you see these people online that say they're validated by a certain group of psychics, there's the psychic directory and there's like Bob Olson and certain people, they can have the best of intentions. But who are they? And I've said this before. Who are they to validate anybody? Who are you? Are you trying to put a psychic into a nine to five job and give them credentials? You can't. It comes instinctually, just like your height. You can be born five foot four, five foot five. You can be born white and you can try to bleach your skin. You can try to darken your skin. But the fact is you still are what you are. And so you can either enhance it or detract from it. But your genetic code is in there. The same with mediumship. It's in there, okay? So all of these people online, when you see that on a medium's website, it, it's natural. Yeah, it's very natural. And everybody does it different. Everybody. I have many psychic friends and everybody handles it differently. Not everybody works as a psychic, but they're, like, there's abilities. There's people that work differently. Like Kenna dreams it. Keithy used to dream it. Jason like lives it, sees it, hears it. Lila, Lila naturally instinctually has it. She sees it and just says it when she was a little girl. So you are born with the genetic predisposition to do it. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to follow it as a path. That's for sure. People dream it. People speak it. People hear it. People sense it. People say it. They just say shit. Your Virgo types will just say it. And they don't know why they're saying it. I have Virgo type friends. They say, I'm not psychic, and they say some radical psychic shit. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you are psychic. So when somebody sits there and tells you, I trained, this is my mentor, they're using them to validate themselves. That's not a good thing. You don't, they don't need to validate themselves. You get a reading, they're either right or they're wrong. Psychics are not 100%. They can say some crazy ass shit. They are not 100%. And I'll use the example of Sylvia Brown, who sometimes I like to bag on because back in the day I worked with her. But having said that, she did the Amanda Berry story. And I think she was on Montel with that. And when she was on Montel, she told the mother, now listen to this. This is how she perceived it. And she, I'm actually thinking she was an authentic psychic. And I've had clients tell me she really was. She probably got commercialized and caught up on it. But when she told Amanda Berry's mom, you won't see your daughter until you die, the implication was the daughter was dead. I didn't think she may have even said it. But the truth was Amanda Berry wasn't dead. The mother died before she found out where the daughter was. So that is in fact true. It's just that she worded it because the images are not clear like, hi, here I am. She has to interpret it and she's on camera and there's a whole bunch of people in the audience. So I give her credit for saying that, actually. She did say to the mother, you will see your daughter when you die, which she's dead, the mother. They never found her daughter. She will see that her daughter's alive. And when her daughter crosses over, she'll see her mother. So that's pretty fucking awesome. 
And she predicted COVID. And she predicted COVID, okay? Without saying it, straight up. She died before COVID came. Bravo, Sylvia Brown. Bravo, okay? Um, yes, she did predict it. Yeah, she totally did. She didn't know what she's saying. She didn't call it COVID. Psychic is not, is not, uh, we're so caught up in like, it's factual. You have to read the strand. And for me, it comes in little stories and snippets and feelings. And I say stupid shit sometimes. I'm not perfect and I'm not God. So neither is any other psychic. All right. You do have to study astrology to be called an astrologer. That is the study. It's very technical. It's mathematical. We seem to have a basis for math on this earth. That's a study thing. Tarot cards, you can get it intuitively or you can study it. But just because you read tarot cards, you can just be a card reader or you can use them to open up your psychic and mediumship abilities. It just depends. So, I mean, there's so many different variations of it. And I saw somebody say, God bless you and thank you for that. And likewise to you. People say that it's evil if you read cards, if you're psychic, if you talk to the dead. I'm going to say this once and once and for all. The churches, and I will say this about the Catholic Church, they do believe in exorcisms and they do allocate money for exorcisms. So that should tell you something. But first of all, are we supposed to believe when we die that we just die and just that's the end of us? Because why would we bother to be good people if we just die? We instinctually know we don't just die. This physicality dies and we go on from, from that, okay? We go on from that, but we don't just die. <laughs> the body dies. And I know that because I'm going to just say this. When I saw Keithy on the ground and... It's really weird, but I, I really had to test my faith with my own child, okay? I had to test my faith. So I was able to speak it for years until it was hit right in front of me, and now I got a dead kid, and now I have to either have faith or say, fuck off, it's all bullshit. And I did feel like saying that at times. However, when I saw my son sitting there and his little feet under the blanket, I thought he was just sleeping. But when I went up to the gurney as the coroner had Jason and I come up to see him, he wasn't there. Like his little body was, but he didn't smell like him. So his body scent was gone. The essence and energy around him was gone. He literally wasn't there. So I know he went on, okay? He wasn't there. I couldn't smell him. So I had to walk my walk through that, okay? So I I still have faith is what I'm saying to you. I had to walk my walk because you can't tell people as a medium about their loved ones and then watch your kid die and then tell them something different. So you just can't. Well, you can if that's how you feel, but that's not how I feel. And Keith came through on so many different levels to the people who painted his picture, to him showing up on the set, to people, all of you, Chris, Chris, I'm calling out Chris on here. Chris for her psychic information, which is outstanding, and Catherine. Catherine, who told me randomly last June, I think it was in June or July, she mailed me and told me Keith was mad. I'm bringing this up again. I'm going all over the place tonight. She told me Keith was mad because his bed was in the backyard and it was broken. Now, I don't live in my married home because I left it six months before my son died, our son died. Anyway, no one told me that anybody was living in Keith's room. Catherine, and I believe that was her name, she said to me, <laughs> Keith is mad. They broke his bed. It's in the room. So I would call John. Ring, ring. John, is anybody living in Keith's room? He's like, no. I go, is his room okay? Is his bed okay? Yes. Two months for them to cop to that. Two months it took them. This woman was emailing me, psychic, not working as a psychic, telling me that. That's Keith telling her that. She's not making that shit up out of nowhere. That's fantastic. Bravo to her. I finally caught them. The bed got broken when they tried to take it down, so they put it in the backyard until I took it to the garbage. That's what was going on. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So when you know that, you have to trust in it. It's not the way we think. I don't know what it is to be truthful. It's different for everybody. So different for everybody. Um, it depends. I think it depends a lot on our belief system. 
and I'm just now flashing on my friend from the gym many years ago, many years ago, it's probably 12 years ago she passed. I used to work out with her in the morning and I cannot remember her name, but we used to chat on the treadmill and her kids went to school, um, went to dance class with my friend Terry's kids. Anyway, she got sick and when I saw her in the mall one day, I saw the version of Catholic angels. You know on the cards um, with the halo, like they draw the picture of the angel and it has the halo, but it kind of looks like a helmet. I saw those angels around her and I was like, wow, she's going to die. Okay, like I just knew it. I knew she was very Catholic, but I knew she was going to die. She had cancer. She thought she was going to live. And when I saw her, I knew she was going to die because I saw that image. Do you know she died on Palm Sunday? So that was her belief system. She was very Catholic, you see? And so they they helped her cross over with her belief system in the most positive way. That's how that happened. Do you see? So it depends on our belief system, how we cross over, right? What are the newbies saying? Newbies, stop. You guys are funny. Yeah. So that's how, that's how that happened. I didn't tell her she was going to die, but I saw it and I told my friend Terry. So, you know, when you see that, you know that they're giving messages in the way that that soul wants to hear it. And that's what I was going to say. Somebody said Jewish there. Here, let me say this. After my son died, I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't function. And I couldn't listen to people talking. Like if I went out to, I was at Home Depot a lot for some reason, buying plants and letting them die. Uh, because I would just felt comfortable buying plants. And then I'd bring them home. I'd look at them in their pots and then they would die and then I would throw them out and go get more plants. That's like something I just wanted to go to Home Depot and shop around the plants. Anyway, um, and I would drive to uh, Idlewild, get out of the car in a park, look around, get back in my car and then drive two hours back and then I would go visit friends and I, I would just do that kind of shit. I would go to my friend's house, sit there not say anything and leave. You know what I mean? But anyway, somebody turned me on to Rabbi, is it Kin? Rabbi Kin on YouTube. Do you know who he is, everybody? Go to him. I've mentioned him before. I tuned him out a bit until just recently. He was phenomenal. He would do hour long, and he's Jewish, obviously, Rabbi. And he was absolutely phenomenal. I listened to him for six months after my son died. Anywhere I went, Home Depot. I can just say Home Depot. I was living in Home Depot. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I just felt like hanging out there. But I put the ear ear pods in and I everywhere I went, I would talk to people, but I listened to him. He was so calming for me. I really, really liked him. He's very good. Look him up on YouTube. Um, I think it's Rabbi K-I-N. I'm just looking it up. He was the best. And he got me through the first six months. Yeah, that's it. Rabbi K-I-N. K-I-N. He was so um, phenomenal in his philosophy and some of his stuff, somebody put all his stuff up online and it's filmed from like 11, 12 years ago. And I was so grateful because something about what he was saying, I was, at, it's Rabbi K-I-N, Kin, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Absolutely fantastic. And I, it's just a regular rabbi and he talks about astrology. He talks about everything, soulmates, all from his Jewish perspective. And for some reason, that was extremely calming for me. I cannot tell you, I, I didn't know what to do. So I, you know, I just didn't know what to do. I was lost. I walked around in circles. I slept on the floor. I slept in the shower. I slept, I couldn't get up in the bed. When I'm stressed, I sleep on the, like on the hard floor. So I was sleeping on the floor. I was sleeping in my car in the back seat, doing stupid shit like that. Rabbi, yes, that's him. Fantastic. I just put him on play. All of his, I went through his playlist like four times. Whoever put him up there, somebody else, Bonnie, Barbara, somebody posts his stuff. I don't even think he has a channel. I think it's somebody else posting his stuff. I'm eternally grateful because whatever it was, I was able to distract myself, um, which was uh, just phenomenal. But I'm saying that. So it's the faith is the key. So I was tested, tested when my Dewberry my little doodle when he died. Um, <laughs> somebody's placing, I've seen the text come in. I thank everybody and for the support, I'm laughing. But it was just, when Keithy died, I just, I, I'm just telling you when it comes, so many people have lost loved ones. And as I said, 
my son was run off the road. But I want you to understand something. Just because there's evil, yeah, my tattoos, for those who haven't seen them, <laughs> now I'm going to totally fucking distract in another way. Okay, so the first tattoos I got was Jason. That's baby Keith. And that's Keith. And that's Keith when he died right there. That was on his phone when I opened his phone. Opened his Snapchat because the phone's still locked. Anyway, when I opened his Snapchat, this is what, this was his phone screenshot. That's Keithy. And then I just put Jason right here, my Jason. Um, and I've still got one spot right here. So Keith's uh, eighth grade, and it looks identical. 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 I am so grateful to Ruger, who's my tattoo artist. He's not mine. He's his own brilliant artist, but I cannot tell you, I was 53 when I got my tattoos, 53, because Keithy died when I was 53. I went into menopause. I was already headed that way, but I had a period. And then when Keith died, my period stopped just like that. So I didn't get a period again after Keithy died. Like the essence of who I was died because I gave birth and he died, right? So, and by that, I mean transition. So this, this actually the words right here, I don't know if you guys can see them. Thank you for saying that though. The words right there by Jason's face, that was my first tattoo. And that was what the coroner gave me. Well, she gave me Keith's phone. She was a young girl, like 31 or two or five, like super young. Anyway, when she gave me Keith's phone, the screensaver said, stop looking for happiness in the same place you lost it. And I tattooed that on my arm and I put Keith's ashes in there. So for those of you that have lost people, um, you can tattoo. And I found out from my friend Barb actually had told me that a long time ago that she tattooed ashes of her mom. And I, otherwise I wouldn't even know you could do that. So all of my artistry has Keith's ashes in it. And also, as you know, I did a, a YouTube on how to make... Um, ash jewelry with resin. So I bought an empty ring bezel, but this is opal and Keith, Keith's ashes and Keithy's hair, the color of his motorbike blue, which is why I wear blue. Um, this, this is a ring with Keithy's ashes. And so I make the jewelry and this, this is Keith's ashes in here with the opals. So, so I do that. That's what I do. I do anything I can do to deal with it whether it's absurd, traditional, or whatever. I drop his ashes on every mountain I climb. He's all over Los Angeles and Arizona on and Canada. He's everywhere. I take, I, John put his ashes. I, that's what I do. Gave his ashes to his friends. I've got one more friend. Keith wants one more person. So I bought a little urn at Christmas to give this one little friend ashes. He said it's time to give him the ashes. So that's what I'm doing. I try to listen. So anyway, I was so grateful. This hurt like some kind of fuckery. <laughs> this hurt like Jesus, like Jesus is hurt. Um, this was Keithy when he was three and it's his little shirt. He's outside in the sun like this, going like this with his teeth and his little freckles. And this, I had to put his, his, uh, this was, he was so proud of his physique, Leo Rising. Uh, he was 24 uh, July 29th of 2020 in Chatsworth. And I'm putting this out there. I have a page, um, Keith's uh, crime page. I forget what we call it. There's pictures on there of, yeah, Keithy was 24. He'd be 27 this December. He'd be 27. And it's weird. And I've told this story and I always go on tangents about my son. So I can't help it. It's just a thing. That is who I am. I'm now in that world my stepson had died when I gave birth to Keith, 10 month John's son, my stepson, Jimmy. If you look at my website, you will see that's Jimmy. He's, <laughs> I'm pointing at him. He's up there in the black turtleneck, if you can see it up there. That's Jim in the black turtleneck and Keithy below him. Um, Jimmy was December 9th, 1967. So Jimmy and I were nine months apart and I married his dad because that's who I am. Anyway, I married his dad. So Jimmy and I were very close in proximity. And 
I tell this story and people say you can't know when someone's going to die. And I'm going to straight out say this. But when I got pregnant with Keith, I tell the story. But it's, it's an example of how the psychic energy works for me. As a person, it's different for everybody. But anyway, I got pregnant on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I went down to this place called the Bicycle Club in Burbank. All right. And I went down there and I found Johnny and he was with, he was with our neighbor, Chris, who died of a brain cancer. A shout out to Chris. He was a construction guy. Our friend, Terry, who was a homicide cop and our friend, Bob, who was a truck driver and all three of them are dead. Anyway, they were all drinking green beer for St. Patrick's Day and I got it in my head that I want to have sex. So I drove down there because there were no cell phones. <laughs> And I went in and I whispered in John's ear. And then I drove him up to our house. It was just up the street. And, you know, living room floor kind of thing. I told his friends, we'll be back. I need to talk to him. <laughs> we lived about, a, you know, like five blocks up the street. So I fucked him on the living room floor. And right then I heard, ping, you're pregnant. Okay. So I said to him, you just got me pregnant. And he's like, I'm not even out of the room. <laughs> this is a true story. He's like, I'm not even out of the room. And I'm like, well, get dressed. I'll take you down the street. So I took him back down to the bicycle club and they all got drunk down there, whatever. And when I got back home, I heard again, you're pregnant. And then I heard, and this is true. I told him at the time, I heard one's coming and one's going. So I had little, no, the morning after pill wasn't a thing back then. I heard one's coming and one's going. So I had just had my little Jason. Um, Jason would have been about two and a half at the time because he was three and a half when Keithy was born. So somewhere in there, approaching his third birthday. Well, it was March. So he would have turned three in July, little Jace. And so I was like, oh shit. So I became terrified. Then John had gotten me in my first pregnancy, a thing the doctor has that has your, it's a little circle thing and they turn it. I still have it. He got me all this like medical journal stuff and all of this, you know, stuff that I so enjoyed. A technical Virgo in the first house, Uranus and Pluto in the first house in Virgo. So I love Virgo shit. Anyway, it, it's a little thing you twist and it shows you last menstrual period and then the, the potential like within seven days birth of the baby. And the baby was going to be right around December 16th. So then I understood Jimmy is a December 9th, my stepson. Jason is a cancer, so it wasn't him. So I knew Keithy was going to come in and Jimmy was going to die. So I put it out of my head, okay? I just was like, I can't fucking think about this. But in the middle of my pregnancy, it's a circle thing for pregnancy that doctors have. They kind of just turn the dial. It's a little cardboard thing. Like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It has all of the months. And you just point it to where you had your last menstrual period. And then they mark it and they're like, okay, you're due around this date. That was back then. Keith was born in 95, so I was in 94. Anyway, um, I knew it was going to be Jimmy, but I didn't understand why. I did not know that he had a drug problem at the time. The kid was beautiful. There's his picture up there. You can see right there in the, in the, right there. Okay, so there was no looking at him and going like, he looks like a fucked up drug addict. Absolutely not. Anyway, middle of the pregnancy, I started hearing he's going to die by Halloween. That's how it came to me. And I get it like Tourette's. It goes in my head like this. It's a Virgo thing probably. I'm coming to think of it as a Virgo thing. And I keep hearing it repetitively. And I have to keep fucking saying it. So I started saying it, right? Out loud. Like a nut. And of course, no one listens to you. They think you're fucking crazy. It was about when I was about seven, eight months pregnant with Keithy, which was Halloween, that he started, I picked him up from the hospital and he'd overdosed. So I knew there was a problem. So during that pregnancy, there was about four times that I was at the hospital and I thought, oh shit. So anyway, I gave birth and everything, he was my stepson, John's son, yeah. Everything was fine, I gave birth. Like, I mean, the birth was painful and Keith almost died. As I said, John, John had to untangle him and get him out. However, what happened that was even like weirder was as Keith was little, four or five months, six months, I kept hearing, it's this Halloween. 
So the week before Jimmy died, it was a week. I've got to plug this in or I'm going to lose you guys. Oh, that's great. Where the hell? Where the hell? Anyway, the week before Jimmy died, um, I had lunch with him at work. And when I had lunch with him, I said to him, how do you want me to bury you? This is a true story. He was outside tanning. He loved to tan. He used to cook food. He used to grill food on the grill so that I could go running. And he used to watch Jason and Jason adored him. I sat with him and I said, how do you want me to bury you? And I said to him, you are going to die. Okay. Yeah. My life sounds insane. That's, but see, when you say stuff like that, when you say shit like that, you're unaware of a psychic world. This is the reality of how psychics live. If you don't think it's, it's a psychic life and it does sound insane. It's not insane. It's a true story. So I said to my husband, your son is going to die. I told his grandmother, I called his sister. I called his mother at the time. This is when I was pregnant though. I told her she needed to come see him. Anyway, a week later, we get a call in the morning and I just walked out the front door. I had 10 month old Keith and I had little Jason, three and a half. And he died, he died at work. Um, and that was that. So before Keith died, I started to hear, it was right around Lila's birthday. And this is also a true story. And the other grandmothers know it. I was at Lila's birthday party and I was at the table with the adults and I was on a group text with Arlene, Estelle, Carol. I think that was our group text at the time. And I said, one of my sons is going to die by September. I'm going to bury them. I literally said that. And I could not stop saying it. I couldn't stop saying it. I could not stop saying it. That's not me wishing it. It's the site. That's how I get it. I lit a candle in the house and it blew up. I was trying to protect them and it fucking blew up. I went to my friend. I asked her, brilliant psychic. And I asked her and I said, which one of my sons is going to die? Okay. I can't find the charger. So you know, it's going to go off in a second. I said, which one of my sons is going to die? She couldn't see it. She could see the chaos, but not which one. The week before Keith died, I went to my house, my old house. And they walked in the, in the house and both of them joking. It was about three days actually before Keithy died. And they walked in and they were all like, I'm bigger than you. You know how the kids weight lift and all this. And I said, stop. One of you two bitches, and that's what I said to them, is going to die. Watch how you drive. Get off your motorcycle. Stop fucking around. The astrology says it. And that's what I said. And both of those sweet boys looked at me and they laughed just like Jimmy did. Three days later, my son was dead and it was Keith, not Jason. And if you know their personalities, you might've thought it might be the other way around just because of the behavior. That doesn't make me evil. I'm being given the information. It's coming from somewhere. I'm hearing it. I'm seeing it. That is how it works for me. So it works that way for me. And I said it. And then on the text, on the Carol, on the text, I said to her two weeks before he died, I said, let's go steal both of their motorbikes because I didn't know Keith had one. I had just found out. Let's go steal the motorbikes. And Carol said to me, I have room in my garage. We can put them in there. I called John. John, I'm going to steal the motorbikes. Leave the garage open. <laughs> I'm going to put them on a lift on a, on a tow truck. I'm going to steal them. And then he said, don't bother. They'll just get insurance money for it. I said, no, I have to do it. I should have listened to myself. I should have listened to myself. I'm not insane because whoever made that comment is trying to trigger me. I'm not insane. It's not insane. When you disqualify people's life by putting a negative like that, when shit like that happens, that's how the world really works. That's how the world works. If you're aware of anything, if you're aware of anything, that's how the world works. Okay? That is how it works. If you don't listen to yourself and you believe in the government, then you have a problem. If you believe in the propaganda, then you have a problem. We are spiritual first. We are spirit beings first. But that's how it happened for me. That's what happened. 
That's what happened. And I told them. I tell people when I get it. I tell them when I get it. So what happens? When I saw my mother-in-law die, she called me that day and she said, my back hurts. I'm like, you probably strained it. <laughs> and I hung up on her because I was, I'm like, you probably strained it. Anyway, John was at the circus with her with the two boys, like the, the whatever circus that was in town. And this is like 2004, three, whatever it was. Anyway, that night I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw her floating kind of in the ethers. And then I saw her yelling at me in a hospital room, telling me, um, telling me something in her pajamas about Jeopardy. The day she died, that's exactly what she was doing. She was watching TV. It was actually the day before she died, telling me something about Je Jeopardy and getting really angry. And on the day she died, I was with Jason, Keith, John, and two of our friends, John and Matt, two of the kids' friends. And we were on our way to see my mother-in-law, but suddenly I got hungry and I said, let's go eat first. And when we showed up at the hospital, we were all there to witness her passing. She wanted us to be there. That's how the world works, y'all. Oh, my God. Anyway, so that's how it happens for psychic people. That's what happens. That's normal in our world. It's not insane. We're not crazy. Actually, if you don't believe in something after yourself, I question your intellect. That's what I'm saying. Still doesn't mean you're always going to be right. And they love to mock us. You know why they love to mock us? Because they want you to live in fear. They want you to think that when you die, when your child dies, that you have to spend $10,000 on a fucking coffin because that matters. That's bullshit, okay? Bullshit. Um, <laughs> they, want you, they want you to bury your person like in a piece of a ground plot. When we buried Jimmy, I think it was close to $20,000. And you can visit him. That's true. You can do that. That's what you can do. I chose not to do that with Keith, but you can definitely do that if that's what you want to do. But your loved one doesn't care where they're buried, truthfully. They care how you honor them, how you live after they've died. Do you make amends? Do you honor? Do you respect? Do you show them what kind of person you are? Do you change your ways? because you want them to see you in a loving light and send love to them. Do you still talk to them? It's a different relationship. It's a relationship where you're here and they're there, but you still have a relationship with them and people don't understand that. And they call you crazy for thinking it, but yet the churches are full and people are giving them money. Those fuckers in the church don't know. Some know. I've met some good priests. I'm not going to say I don't. I met a priest that channeled one time and I have a friend that's a nun and she's brilliant. She's on TikTok and <laughs> she's brilliant. Anyway, um, I've met some good people in the clergy. They feel a calling. Those are the truthful ones. So you have to understand, we have communication with them. It's just not in our scope of understanding. So it's very important that people understand that, right? It's an important thing. It's a valuable thing. I don't want people to think that's what's it. And it was still devastating for me when my son died. I could, I could hardly breathe. I was brought to my knees. And if you watch the videos, which the police did, the body cam videos, which I've seen, I look psychotic, okay? When I get there, I look insane. I look like the woman I saw, and y'all know this, seven years before Keith died, there was a kid that died outside of our house on his motorcycle. I think his name was Daryl. Anyway, I said to John, he's going to die. And we got in our car, drove around the corner, and I witnessed the accident. That is also a true story. I dragged my husband out of bed to go see that. When that kid died, Keith and I stood in his bedroom window because it was right outside of his bedroom window on the street. When he died over the fence, not in our backyard, when that, when that young man died, I watched his mother come across the street and I watched her and I saw her. And seven years later, I was doing the same thing, the same tent, the same body on the ground, the same screaming, guttural scream the same thing so it's very they were preparing me at that time so you have to understand that when things happen like that it's not the end of the story we are dead here the story begins over there when we are relieved of this this is no great shakes here you know what i'm saying i mean it's good enough but we don't know anything else 
So yeah, so that's how that works. Yeah, nuns are cool. <laughs> nuns are cool by me. It's the transition out of the physical. But no, it doesn't make it easier. I'm saying I was devastated. I could not I couldn't function. It's weird. I couldn't I stopped on the tape. You can see me. I'm screaming. I'm out of my car. I'm running for the body. I'm almost falling for my son. The police stopped me. And you can see Jason getting out of his car doing the same thing. And they're holding him back too. We did that. We responded the same way. And suddenly I stopped. And then I got real bitchy. I just stopped. Like dead stop. Just completely. I shut down right then. Haven't felt a thing since. I don't feel shit. So you can say whatever you want to me. I don't really care. But yeah, no, I just went numb. On the day that I was picking the pictures for the funeral to give to Tia and Andrew and Allie, Keith's friends, to make the boards for the funeral, um, the service, th that day, and I was, I had asked Keith the week before he died, can you bring your baby picture? There's a huge tub. I had five tubs of them, a huge Costco tub full of photo albums. And he was the only one, him and Jason, strong enough. He delivered his own childhood pictures up to my house the week before he died so that I had them. So I was going through all of that stuff and I was sobbing in the house. Like I could hardly, I, I, pro I probably had snot coming out of my nose and I was just in my underwear standing there looking through the tub of pictures and I had them like three deep in, you know, sitting by the table and something banged on the top of it. And I'm the only one in that house and it was Keith. And I know it was him. And I immediately was startled. He was trying to get my attention. He knocked stuff off. He was constantly around. So just to let you know, I had to live it. And I'm telling you, they're not dead. They can see, they can feel. It's just that we are blocked fully. I mean, I have had experiences with my childhood best friend that died on a motorcycle. Oddly enough, and I didn't know he was dead, but he came to me and I was able to step out of my body. I was a trance channel as a child I would step out but it was so brief and it was just so clear and then it was gone he was around me a long time so it it's just how your body receives it it's just how you receive the information your loved one your your dad oh honey I'm sorry your dad your uncles your mothers your loved ones they can hear you keep talking to them. <laughs> She's bathing herself. She's like, shut up, you bitch. I'm hungry. Uh, I'm sorry. It just struck me as funny. Um, they can hear you. They can hear you. I promise you they can hear you. I know my son hears you. He's not sitting there listening like what's my mom saying on every word, but he can hear me. I know that. I have a different relationship with him now. When my father died, cause of so much source of pain in my life, I communicated with him. He's always around. My dad pops up all the time. My mother pops up. My I don't feel her though. My psychic friends feel her. But they can hear you. They will go on and do things and come back and go on. We don't just die and then suddenly we're with God. There's so many different levels. Everybody go read Michael Newton. Michael Newton, Life in Between Lives, where he channeled. He was a, um, I'm sorry, past life regressionist, hypnotherapist, and he got people in between their lives, in between their lives. So there's so many things we don't know. There's so many things we don't know. And they try to scare you here. I miss my son. I'm going to tell you straight out. I, I miss Jimmy every single day. He changed the course of my life. My stepson did. He changed my life in such a way that I couldn't live the same way after he died. And I channeled him very, I channeled, he communicated I, Jimmy came to me on this live YouTube. If you go back to June of 2020, you got to look through June through, through September when the blanket sitting behind me, I was in a different house, different studio. Anyway, Jimmy showed up on a live stream. Like he stood in front of me and I said, I wonder who he's here for. That's my stepson. I see him. I communicated him with him in the, on his wake. He showed me how he left his body. Very different communication than with Keith. And he showed up, Keith showed up on the blue blanket. It happens. They're, but they're two different individuals. Jimmy's one kind, Keithy's one kind. Your loved one's different. It's also how they respond. How did their body energy harness? How did that happen? So it's exactly that way. I want you guys to know it. And you know, my dad passed. You can talk to your dad, Angela. You can talk, talk to him. I know you miss him in the physical I'm, I wake up every day talking to Keith, every single day I talk to Keith 
first words out of my mouth. I hike through the forest talking to my son. God forbid you walk up on me and be like, what the fuck is she saying? <laughs> so you, you have to know you can communicate. You just, yes, Bible in the name, in Jesus' name, absolutely. In the Bible, does it not say that you don't talk to your loved ones? The Bible is the most metaphysical book on planet Earth. One of my old friends used to say that all the time. It's a book. It's metaphysical as hell. Do you think they really parted the Red Sea? You think the Red Sea really parted like that? Really? Mm-hmm. No. Mm -mm. Thank you all for the super chats, you guys. I mean, there, you died in your surgery. You see the world differently. You see the world differently. Yes, the Bible is full of spells too, but Jesus was definitely a light worker. So was Buddha, light worker. These are all, I know it's a metaphor, but some people take the Bible literally. You know those people. And nowhere in the Bible for you people who are going to say I'm evil. Number one, shut up. I'm not murdering anybody. Secondly, I just have to say this. The three, and I haven't read the Bible fully, so I don't know the Bible fully. <laughs> the three wise men, right? This is in your Bible. The three wise men followed the North Star, okay? That's called astrology, the charting of the stars. The three wise men followed the North Star on the advice of a prophet. What is a prophet but a medieval term for a psychic? So basically three astrologers who brought herbs and protected themselves with crystals. Crystals are not evil. They're rocks out of the ground that God created on the advice of a prophet, medieval psychic, to find the little baby Jesus, right? And they brought gifts of frankincense and myrrh. Isn't that what everybody says? So then if that's true, I'm sorry, what's wrong with astrologers and psychics? The problem is when it's used to scam people, okay? That's the problem. But that is in the Bible. That is in the Bible, according to the Bible people. So if that is in the, they studied the stars. That's astrology. That's what we're studying, except we're off the earth's axis. But that's a whole, and essential oils, frankincense and myrrh. And what's perfume? And, and the priests, that guarded the temples, that guarded people back in the Bible had protection. They, 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 Bobby knows about this. She's the one that taught me that, but they protected themselves with crystal. Oh, there is good and evil. Absolutely. fucking -lutely, there's good and evil. Yes. I think pets come back. Absolutely. And I don't think your pets leave. I see someone I used to read in person for almost 40 years at the same table I'm sitting at right here where my kids were growing up. Thank you all for the super chats, y'all. Thank you so much. Literally, when I used to read in person, I would see people's pets come in behind them. Like the pets stay very close on the astral. Absolutely close. So, and loved one whose body passed, but you feel, yes, you feel like I, I died when my son died. I was like, what the fuck just happened? What just happened? What happened? What the actual fuck just happened? And I went completely numb. Completely numb. Completely numb. And my funeral service was a gorilla service. The way Keith would have liked it. I texted everybody and not everybody because I forgot half the people because I couldn't think to show up at a park where he'd been working out before he died. And they all showed up. The SUVs, the people, the, everybody just showed up at 630 to the park. Had the preacher show up. Thanks to Lori, Libra Lori. And yes, the movie Ghost is a is a phenomenal example. Phenomenal. Whoever was the um, person who uh, consulted on that, but they had to do the movie as a comedy. Did you notice? They had to make it a comedy because it has to be fucking funny. They can't just tell it like it is. No, no, we can't do that. But I will say this. The character, Whoopi, Gold's char Whoopi Goldberg's character is phenomenal. Because first she's trying to play a psychic. Oh, I need this. I need that. And she's, she's doing it Southern Baptist-like. And then she really sees. See, she really had the gift. She just didn't know it. And it's thanks to Sam's character, which is Patrick Swayze. It's thanks to his character. He chose to give her that gift of communication. Because they can communicate with anybody. I mean, people say that. They're like, well, why you? And I'm like, well, why not? They communicate with who they know can communicate with them in whatever way they frequency they need to. So they can come to anybody, anybody. 
you, me, them, it's not special. It's a frequency and they are able to vibe with a frequency. Okay. So it's, I, Patrick Swayze was an abused husband. I feel I did a video on him. Here comes Tallulah. She's coming in this way to get her dinner. <laughs> um, yeah, goes it trigger me. I think it it triggers people. Thanks to Willie Lopez. I <laughs> fucking Willie Lopez. Somebody's on here is Willie Lopez. It's pretty funny. But 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 the essence of the movie Ghost, like when he steps out of his body, that is what happens. Like they you step out and he's like like he's he's first going into shock because he's a physical and then he's just a spiritual. And then he can watch. They see you. So don't think when you rob their fucking houses when they die and you fuck their wives and you do that shit. Don't think that they can't see. They can see. They can hear how you talk about them. They can see how you felt about them. And they can understand everything. Everything. So don't think they can't. And that's going to P. Diddy. All the shit you've done, they can see. So you ain't escaping shit because you cannot escape it. They can see. They can see. That's just as simple as that. They can see. So it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is, y'all. It's just thank you all for the super chats. Y'all are so generous. So, so generous. But that's what happens. So they know. So see, Sam's character is trying to stop um, Demi Moore's character from being friend befriending somebody they both thought was a friend. But he can see. She can't see. Because we're blocked here. It's like we're stupid here. Yes, I did a video. Princess Diana was one of the ones that started this channel. My son, Keith, was the one that taught me how to monetize this channel and was the one that told me, like, just do your videos on the dead celebrities. And Princess Di was one of them. The reason for that is I was hiking with a, with a hiking friend of mine who was a hairdresser who was doing the hair of one of Princess Diana's best friends from when she was alive for some reality show. Um, and he was doing, he was the hairdresser on that show. And so when we were running, he was talking to me about her hair. And when he said Princess Di, it clicked into my head and I thought, I'm going to go do a video about her. I'm going to go do a video about her. So that's how that, and that's back in 2018. So you have to go all the way back. There's like 500 videos on this. I don't know if I did. Kate Spade came through really quickly. Look, Hungry Pants is down here. Look, look, y'all. She's trying not to be noticed. Here's Miss Hungry Pants. She's like, I need my dinner. I need my dinner. <laughs> She's so mad. I'm going to get scratched, y'all. I'm going to get scratched. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, here's how you know when someone's doing any kind of magic on you. Let's look at magic. Okay, so magic has an intention with it, okay? So you can have an intention to do something that is like, I wish good health on everybody. I wish abundance. You can also say, I send back any negative energy that's sent to me, right? But you don't name a name because you don't really know who's sending it. You may have an idea, but do you really know? Because people can cloak themselves and hide themselves. So the way that I would word it is the way to know black magic is through intention. So intention of negative energy will show up in addiction in your house. Fighting in your relationships. I mean intense fighting. Um, accidents. Wep um, wasps. Flies. The day that Keith died, I got stung. I was up Mount Wilson, one of my favorite hills to run. It's a mountain. I was running up there and I got swarmed on by wasps and stung all down my backside. And I, I, knew, I knew something was up the morning that Keith died. That was like by nine o'clock in the morning, spiders. Um, so I thought you meant, why are you blocked on my live stream? I'm like, you're not, look, I'm looking at this, it's bugging. Anyway, flies in your house, um, near people almost driving into you, people getting angry at you for no reason. Like you're out in the mall and somebody says, I'm gonna fucking hit you. And you're like, shut the fuck up. 
over trying to break up your love relationship, any kind of like Jezebel spirit, cheating in the house, um, meaning with your husband, with your wife, uh, you know, sudden losses of huge amounts of money, stuff like that, all of that systematically coming down because the, their goal is to distract you from your strength and power. When you understand that you have more power than they do and you keep that. Okay. So here's the thing. As a kid, I used to think it was really, we used to word, use the word back then. That's really gay. You're behaving really gay. I know. Don't come after me. I'm just from a different generation. Just shut up with that. It didn't mean gay sexual. It meant like, oh, that's like being a doofus. That was the word in the 80s, late 70s, 80s. We have since become politically correct. Anyhow, we used to think like if you don't smoke weed or you don't have a drink or you don't do drugs or get fucked up, right? That you're like a nerd, a doofus, a whatever. Hmm? But the reason that you keep your body addiction free and you keep your mind and you treat people properly, okay, the way, not the way they treat you. You treat them the way your soul chooses to be seen. And the reason you do that in the highest level that you can, right? Because sometimes people are going to test you and you're going to have to slap them. I know this. But the reason you do that is because the more that they can degradate you, right? Corrupt you, make you corrupt, the more they can get into your psyche because the more corrupt you are, the more you allow depression, sadness, addiction, cheating, other people's body fluid. I can't, I mean, as a kid, I thought sex was fun. Now I'm like, oh, like thinking about it. You've got to really, really, really think about who you let into your body. The more that they can corrupt you with money, with sex, with drugs, with the pursuit of money, sex, and drugs, right? The more they do that, the more that your spirit etheric body opens and the more they can attach and use you for their agenda, which is the beast system, which is all things that are, are not what we are in essence. The more they can entrap you into that. Do you know how depressed? Matthew Perry is a good example. Do you know how depressed you are when you take a deal? And P. Diddy, all of them. Does he look happy? I mean, he's got everything in money. I wouldn't want to be him. I wouldn't want to be him. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be John Belushi. I wouldn't want to be Chris Farley. I wouldn't want to be John Travolta. I wouldn't want to be any of them. Kevin Spacey. Do you know how 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 unpleasant it must be to be in their bodies? Really, how unpleasant. So you don't want to give entities that are not human any control over your vessel, which is your vehicle, which is your body. That's what you don't want to do. So if they can get your parents to corrupt you and get you to respond in a negative way to yourself, you will bring about depression and illness and sickness and sickness of thought and you will give up on yourself and you will do all of those things that they love for you to do. Don't let them win. Don't let them win. I think they've hijacked the earth. I have no idea why we're blocked. I don't think we all chose to reincarnate here. I think they they hijacked the reincarnation cycle. I don't quite understand what it is, but I think they hijacked it. And the reason that we need to treat ourselves well is because we are powerful and they don't want us to see that. They want to enslave us by making us feel bad if we don't look the way like a Kardashian. If we're dark-skinned, if we're light-skinned, if we're tall, if we're short, if we're fat, if we're blah, 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 all of this. It doesn't matter. They want us to think that we're at their mercy. Well, if you don't have money, you're going to have a bad life. If you don't go to university, shut up. Shut the fuck up, okay? You and all your money, Bill Gates, are a coward, a pig, and a weirdo. I don't care that you're a billionaire. You're disgusting. You, P. Diddy, disgusting, okay? Don't want to be you. Don't care if I'm poor and broke. I'll always find bleach for my hair, so there's that. We are spirit beings. Human beings are powerful. These people are not exactly human. They don't register on the same level. When you sell out, you allow other things to live in your house. Remember that.
Human beings are powerful. We are not meant to be enslaved. They are trying to take us down. Break up the family. Remove your gender. Take your dreams away from you. Take the ability to rent a house because no one has $50,000 a month to pay for a stupid house in Los Angeles at least. Do all of that. Such bullshit, you all. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. Telling you it's normal to have the unhoused, unhoused on the street. They're homeless. Don't call them unhoused because you want to clean it up. That's like taking Hustler and saying they're Playboy. Therefore, it's cleaner over here because it's Playboy. No, they're still naked and spreading their legs. Same thing. Sorry, got to use that analogy. Until you start to understand that you have the power to change it and not through voting on them, but by how you behave, by raising your vibration, people tend to follow you. When it wasn't popular to exercise, I exercised every day. When, it, when I made conscious decisions with people that I fell in love with who had addictions and stayed up and partied all night and did this and that, I made a conscious decision as a runaway teenager to get up and jog in the morning. I literally did that. I said, you know what? I'm going to focus on exercise and make that my obsession so that I don't have to do the drugs and I'm going to get up at four and I'm going to run anyway. Pray every day. The law of attraction isn't quite truthful because the law of attraction only works. It, it does and it doesn't, but it only works because you notice people in America, in England, in Canada, first world problems, we're all wanting to be this and that and have money and have extra clothes and a house. People in Ethiopia, people in Haiti who are starving, doing the law of attraction will never get what they need. They will never get what they need, okay? Because <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Because they've hijacked these whole countries and their energy frequency. So they've enslaved the country, the land grids, and the people born into that country. So you're right. Components of love. What is the only way to show love? To love yourself and show authentically who you are. Who are you authentically? That's how you show love. Who is your authentic self? Express yourself. Don't hide. Don't be. Be yourself. That's it. That's it, y'all. That's how it goes. All right. I'm about to run out of airtime here on my phone. Okay, you guys. I'm like looking. I've got to stop squinting. I'm going to try to figure out if anybody knows how to stop this chat from going that fast and where I go, tell me where to do it. Yes, Haiti has been hijacked energetically. So the people of Haiti are much like the Native American people and the Mexican people. They hijack certain land masses because of the energy, the latitude and longitude, the ley lines of the land. They hijack that because they can draw power from it. And then as a whole, they, they hijack the country, the people that are have the misfortune of being born there under that. So it's spiritual. It's not like we're hijacking them. It's spiritual hijacking. They go on the astral and they do that. And people, we're not taught this, but this is a thing. And people don't understand that. The people of Haiti, they can't, they, they can do the law of attraction all they want. All they want. <laughs> Day and night. It's not changing for them because they've encapsulated them energy-wise. So energy portal-wise around the country, it's terrible. They're trying to do that to us in America right now. So the way to do it is to be authentic to yourself and to act yourself. And people will follow your vibration, okay? There's genocide all over the world. It's You guys in the Middle East. There's genocide in every single country. I'm going to bring this up again because we I spoke about it at the beginning. But Native Canadians, Native Americans, why don't they ever get resolved? The Mexicans and California, I mean, the government is the issue. It's not the people, it's the government. The government encourages the war. They've got their shit. They've got the lands gridded. They don't want people to have it. That's the problem. Okay. So I've got to run, you guys. Yeah, yeah. no, hey, I feel badly for Haiti. The missing children, you know that? I've been speaking about it for years, 30 years. In fact, I was married for 36 years with my husband, okay? When I met him on the first date, my words were, the world is run by pedophiles and fucking Satanists. 
I was 21, turning 22, and I knew that. How did I know that? Because it's obvious. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so obvious. If it's not obvious, I don't know what to say. You have to raise your vibration to elevate it. And the way to show love is not to just be loving to other people. It's to love yourself enough to express your authentic self the way that you were created. Gay, straight, or anything in between. Blonde, brunette, tall, short, fat, smart, dumb, whatever. Express yourself the way you are. That's the truth. Once you are authentic with your expression, then you raise your vibration. And then others will follow because you love how you are. That's why you treat yourself with respect, not disrespect. All right, you guys, I love you all so much, so much. And I thank you all. And believe you me, eventually I will read my emails. I can't read them all. It's like outrageous. I know I'm one person. I will be answering questions. I will be doing your charts. And I am booked up reading wise for my time until February. I will not be reading seven days a week. I cannot do that because I'm one human. I have grandkids. I have running, I have exercise, I have pole dancing class, and I have aerial class. So I've got to do all of that. And I have a hungry cat who's going to stare me down from behind. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you all for the super chat, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye, you guys. I'll be back. I'm putting a video. I've got to edit Matthew Perry's video. Don't know how it turned out. Just did it. Going to put it up tonight. Okay, bye. Bye, you guys.